Okay, this is how I'm cutting the herringbone gears. Um, I'm cutting one half at a time, and you can see that I'm using a B axis and a C axis uh, to rotate it. Uh, the laser was set up with an offset of uh, 2.781 millimeters so that I could cut uh, half of the tooth from one side and half the tooth from the other side. I'm going to pause it and show you what the uh, computer setup is like. Okay, here's a Mach 3 with a 6-axis screen set. And you can see that I have the B-axis set at 14.94. Uh, and that's because uh, of the number of steps per revolution my uh, computer makes, uh, which is 11.1111 steps uh, per degree. And so with 15 degrees, it doesn't come quite out uh, to be correct, but 14.94 is close enough to 15 degrees, and if all the other gears are made the same way, then it's not a problem. And now the G code, let's see if we can get in a little bit closer, is basically I got a pause uh, starting out so that I could switch from Mach 3 to my uh, uh, LaserWorks 6. Then you'll see that uh, M7 turns on a relay that turns on the uh, laser. Uh, then there's a four second delay uh, to allow the laser to make the cut. Then the M9 tells the laser to go off. And then the G01C9 is the first uh, position that it will cut at, which is uh, nine degrees, because uh, it's a 40 tooth uh, gear, you need uh, nine degrees between each step. And then that repeats on down with the seven, uh, M7, G4, and M9 again. And I'm gonna pause again, and I'll show you the laser. In laser works, I have the uh, involute uh, tooth shape uh, from Gerotix uh, Motion 3, and I've jogged uh, the uh, B, uh, C axis over to where it will start cutting a half a, degree, a, half a tooth uh, to the right of the center line. I'm gonna pause again, I'm gonna get this started. Okay, uh, we're back at uh, Mach 3. I'm gonna click the start. You'll notice there's 15 seconds to switch back to laser works. Now I'm gonna put my cursor right on the start button. Hope you can see that. And then it's gonna start cutting. There we go. And there's the first two. See if I can get a better angle on that so that it looks. And you can see that what Mach 3 is doing is it's firing uh, the laser using uh, laser works. Uh, it's all done by a relay, a very simple setup, and uh, it works pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this because there's no sense watching all of it, but I'll um, stop it or restart it about three quarters of the way through. Uh, I changed my mind. I'll show you more. Uh, then there was some discussion uh, while it's uh, cutting. Uh, you see that tooth that didn't come out? Uh, that's just hanging there. Um, it'll fall out as soon as I uh, touch it. By hand or with a poker or something. Anyway, uh, those lines, uh, I really only need one of those lines. Uh, the uh, uh, 36 degree uh, increments uh, was done for another test while I was setting this up, so you could ignore them. The only important line is the uh, is one line that's right down the center that tells uh, allows me to set up the um, uh, B and C axis so that the line is parallel to the uh, guide rail and uh, that uh, it's uh, horizontal. I use a square. You can see it 
down there to uh, make sure that the C axis motor is uh, uh, right angles to the honeycomb base. Uh, and uh, what's really cool is uh, the way that uh, Mach 3, even though it's not showing up on the screen, uh, is uh, running uh, in parallel. Uh, by the way, I'm using a G540, uh, really excellent uh, drive. Uh, it's four axis, but I'm only using two axis, and I've configured uh, the X, Y as the B and C axis. Uh, the program, uh, like I said, uh, for 40 teeth into 360 degrees, you need nine degrees uh, separation between each tooth. And uh, other than that, uh, I do have a few minor things I gotta fix on this. Uh, uh, I have a D shaft and uh, I want to be able to uh, use the four holes in the that are visible for alignment of one tooth to the next, or one gear to the next gear. In other words, the right hand gear uh, to the left hand gear. Uh, having a brain freeze on that right now, why I, uh, I just can't rotate it 15 degrees, but there's a reason. In any case, you can see that it's continuing to cut uh, relatively nicely. Tooth uh, forms looks good, and uh, I'll bring it in the house after I cut it. We'll pause it one more time, and I'll show you uh, how they mesh. And probably what you're seeing is the first time that uh, on YouTube that uh, you'll ever see. Uh, helical gear being cut at 15 degrees on a laser. Uh, like I said, it's a fairly simple setup. The motors are from Automation Technology Sinks. They're NEMA 17s with the 65 ounce, uh, ounce inch uh, holding torque. Motors draw about two amps and uh, the motors are only uh, 15 bucks a piece so you can't go wrong. One thing you'll notice is that I got foil around the uh, wires and around the base of the uh, uh, C-axis motor. And the reason for that is that when I first started, the, the motor mounts are all made from wood and I didn't have them covered and I started to, uh, the laser when it would burn through would also burn through uh, or uh, scorch the top of the motor mount. Similarly, the uh, uh, wires were starting, uh, the insulation was starting to get cut, and so I wrapped those also. And so now you can see that it's cut all the way around and uh, looking good. I'm going to pause it again and then we'll mesh some gears. I'll show you the side views. Here are some gears I just cut today, and hopefully you can see the 15 degree angle of the gear teeth and I'm going to superimpose it on some other gears that I've already cut and you can see that they mesh quite nicely. I can't seem to hold the camera and um, rotate them at the same time but take my word for it they run smoothly. Uh, so I have a male and a female, excuse me, a left and a right gear, uh, so you can see the honeycomb. I will add a separator in the middle. Anyway, uh, here's a first look at how to do herringbone gears on a laser.